start with Jesus every day. Moment by moment in work and play, I will start in life and starting out right. Starting with Jesus, it is a delight. Starting with Jesus, day and night. Starting with Jesus, I'm starting out right. Hello everyone, welcome to Starting With Jesus, where we want to encourage you to start everything you do with Jesus. Today, we have an exciting story, and it's about somebody who chose Jesus. Even though everybody around him was choosing something else, this man chose Jesus and listened to God's voice. And I'm going to be interested, and I think I suspect Miss Michelle might tell you something about his name, too. She usually does, doesn't she? It's pretty cool, huh? Okay, well, before we get to that, let's get to some singing. God sees the little sparrow fall, it meets his tender view. If God so loves the little bird, I know he loves me, too. He loves me, too. He loves me, too. I know he loves the little things I know he loves me too he paints the lily of the field perfumes each lily bell if he so loves the little flowers I know he loves me well he loves me too he loves me too I know he loves me too because he loves the little things I know he loves me too Jesus is my Savior, I 
shall not be moved. In his love and favor, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters, Lord, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters, Lord, I Christ abiding, I shall not be moved. In the love I'm hiding, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters, Lord, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters, Lord, I shall not be moved. Hello, friends. I want you to imagine that you live during the 13th century. You're a Native American who lives in this area of the Canyon of the Ancients. And off in the distance, you see enemy raiders coming to attack you. It's a neighboring tribe. And they're outnumbering you. They have weapons, they have armed warriors. Where are you gonna go? What are you gonna do? Well, many of the Native Americans living here uh, built these huge towers that you can see right behind me. Large towers that in some ways uh, look similar to the fortresses in other parts of the world. In fact, right behind us is Hovenweep Castle. This was a place that was used for refuge, for safety, to store food, and actually, there's a lot of guesses as to what these towers were actually used for. But the Bible tells us something very interesting in Proverbs 18, verse 10. It says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous man runs into it and is safe. Well, what does that mean? That means if you're in trouble, you don't need a tower like the one behind me to run to. You can run to Jesus and he will be with you. It's time to access this week's Nature Spotlight to see a nature submission that one of you has turned in. Looks like today's Nature Spotlight are pictures sent to us by Ruby and Owen. Location, Michigan. Wow, look at that frozen lake at Peninsula Point, frozen enough for you to walk on it with your dad. And to think, God will thaw it all out in just a few months. Thank you, God, for being so amazing and doing what we could never do. And thanks, kiddos, for sending this in. I encourage you to get out there and notice God's wonderful nature, the big and the small that God has designed especially for you. So grab a grown-up and go explore. And don't forget to take a picture, record a video, or make a drawing and send it to us at nature at startingwithjesus.com. I can't wait to see it. I am so excited for you to meet today's Bible character. But before we do, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for caring for us and always having our best interest in mind. Send your Holy Spirit to be here with us now and help us to learn something new about you today. In your name we pray, amen. Before I introduce you to this person, we need to do a little history lesson and a little review. God hadn't wanted any kings, right? He was their king, but the people had asked way back in the time of Samuel for a king. How's that going? not too well. Now we don't have just one king, we have two kings and we have two nations, right? In the north we have Jeroboam and he was king over 10 tribes of Israel. And in the south we have Rehoboam who was king of two tribes and that was called Judah. Now I get these two confused sometimes and we're going to be talking about them for a while. So let's clarify. The north is Israel and think I comes before J in the alphabet, right? H-I-J-K. And so north, Israel, I comes before J, south, Judah. And that's how we're going to remember, okay? Now, Jeroboam, we're going to focus um, on Israel today. And Jeroboam was the king. Now, he had so much potential, right? God had set him up. He'd given him 10 tribes. That's a lot, right? And instead of setting up a beautiful temple to God in Israel, because he was afraid of having people go south to Jerusalem to worship and wanting to stay there and be true to Rehoboam, he set up two golden calves, told the people, here are your gods. Does that sound familiar? 
how sad. I didn't think I was going to have to use this felt again. But here we are, two golden calves repeating history. And the priests of God said, no, we will not worship those golden calves. They and many other people moved south to Judah to avoid this, right? But in the meantime, we have the Israelites worshiping other gods. Isn't that sad? Now, Jeroboam died and... Sadly, the kings after him got worse and worse and worse until we get to the king Ahab. Not who I wanted you to meet today, but we have to meet him anyway. And he became king. In fact, he was like the most wicked one yet, the Bible says. He married Jezebel, who influenced him to worship Baal and to build a temple to him in their capital city of Samaria. How sad is this? In fact, the name Jezebel means impure. Interesting. Now we're going to meet the guy I wanted you to meet. His name is Elijah, and he was a prophet of God. His name means the Lord is my God. And he lived in the mountains just east of the Jordan River. Elijah was sent to Samaria by God with a special message for King Ahab. And that's where we're going to jump into God's word and find out just exactly what that message was. Are you ready? 1 Kings 17 verse 1. 1 Kings 17 verse 1 says, and Elijah, Elijah, sorry, the Tishbite, getting ahead of history. And Elijah, the Tishbite, and the inhabitants of Gilead said to the inhabitant of Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall be no dew nor rain these years except at my word. And then he left. The king was flabbergasted. He was so surprised that someone would march into his palace and tell him this. Baal was in charge of the rain. The God of Israel was not going to be able to influence the weather like that. Well, we know otherwise, but Elijah left and God directed him to go into hiding because Elijah was in big trouble, right? So God said, go get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the brook Cherith which flows in the Jordan. And God provided for Elijah there. He had water from the brook and God sent ravens two times a day with bread and meat for him to eat. Isn't that amazing how God provided and cared for Elijah? Just like he does for us, right? Well, ravens don't feed me, but you get the idea. So Elijah stayed there until the brook ran dry. And that's when God sent him to the town of Zarephath in the country of Sidon and said, dwell there for I've commanded a widow to provide for you. Elijah obeys and he goes to Zarephath and he sees a widow picking up sticks and he asks her for some water. That's a reasonable request. During a drought slash famine slash not much water, it was probably a difficult request, but she agreed that she would go and get him some water. Their wells must have not completely dried out yet. And on his, her way to do that, he calls out to her and he says, can I have some bread too? Now that was a big ask and that's when she responded and she said, verse 12, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in, prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. How sad. And this is where Elijah says something that doesn't really make sense at first, right? Unless you serve a God of miracles, right? And Elijah said to her, do not fear, go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake first. At first that sounded selfish, but don't worry, it's not. And bring it to me and afterward, Make some for yourself and your son. Now this didn't make sense to her, but she trusted him because he said, For thus says the Lord of Israel, The bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. This took a lot of trust. This random guy comes walking up to you and asks for your last piece of bread. Wow. So she went and did according to what Elijah said. She and her son, or, or so she <clears throat> and he and her household ate for many days. God was true to his promise, and the bin of flour was not used up. Amen. Nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke to Elijah. Isn't that amazing? God showed himself to this woman in another amazing way. Um, you can learn more about that story in our podcast, Seed Pod for Kids. But her son dies, and actually, God uses his power through his servant Elijah to bring the son back to life. An amazing story. So you want to check that out. It's in 1 Kings 17. Um, verse 17 is where it starts too, if you want to read it from God's word. Anyway, meanwhile in Samaria, <laughs> at the beginning of this all, they thought they had it covered, right? They thought, Psh, Baal's going to take care of us. He's the one that controls the rain. He's the one that controls the dew. That's the water in the ground in the morning, right? And so they were not worried. They were mad that Elijah would have the audacity to make these claims, right? But they weren't worried. But then, <laughs> 
as the rain didn't come, the dew didn't come day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, um, and a drought just came across the whole land, nothing could grow, everything was dying, they began to worry, right? And the, the prophets of Baal prayed louder, they made more sacrifices, they were doing everything they could. In fact, by year three, Jezebel actually killed God's prophets that were still living in the land of Israel. Isn't that sad? Now we do know though that Obadiah, who was a palace administrator, actually saved 100 of them and hid them in a cave, which I thought was really cool of him to do that. And very gutsy for him to do that. He worked for the king and he was defying the queen. Everybody was hunting for Elijah, per the king and queen's order, right? In and out of the country. They were searching everywhere for him because they were mad. They didn't realize that it was their fault for worshiping Baal and that this was their consequence for not worshiping the true God and that God wanted good for them and yet they had chosen bad for themselves. Dun, dun, dun. I know you think I'm going to tell you what happens next, but you're going to have to come back next week because this is a two-parter. So come back next week to know what happens with Elijah and the people of Israel and Baal and his prophets. We'll find that out next week. Until then. Start with Jesus by exploring his word. The birds up on the treetop sing their song. The angels chant their chorus all day long. The flowers in their garden blend their hues. So why shouldn't I, why shouldn't you praise him too? The birds up on the treetops sing their Hello and welcome back to Craft Time once again. Savannah and I have another fun craft for you this week. And Savannah, will you hold this up for us? Our Bible verse talks about how God cared for Elijah. And so we're going to make a picture of how the ravens brought food to Elijah. So we'll just set that to the side. And I'm gonna show you what you need. So first you need just a piece of paper and you wanna hold it up for us, Savannah? You want a piece of paper and then you want to draw a bird or you could even trace a bird and draw your brook cherith and just the dry ground that shows how there was no rain and all the green grass went away so that's what you need and then you need two googly eyes and just some little um, like some chips or some little bits of bread to represent the food that the raven brought some glue coarse colors and then we have this bible verse here that talks about how God told Elijah to go hide himself beside the brook Cherith and that he would give him food and drink. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you want to do, Savannah, is how would you color the raven for us? And I'm going to help you with the brown grass here because it's all dried up. The grass is not pretty and green anymore in our Bible story that we learned about this week. So it's kind of fun when you get to team up and do a craft together where you're both coloring at the same time on the same picture. Sorry, Savannah, I'm kind of bumping you, huh? All right, so we got the bird. And I'm gonna do a little bit of water here on this side, just so you could kind of get an idea. And we'll show you our example here in just a minute. All right, Savannah, while I'm finishing up the water, do you wanna put a little bit of glue on that? And we'll get our Bible verse picture next. That's probably enough. You don't want too much glue. Okay. Uh-oh. Okay, so I'm gonna flip this over. We're gonna put it on like so. And then, yes, yeah, so then we're gonna do the googly eyes. So I'll put two drops of glue and you put the googly eyes on. Oops, oh, I got a little extra glue on that. So be careful when you put your googly eyes on. It's easy to put um, too much glue. I'm actually gonna put a little bit here because our little googly eye came off on our example picture. Okay, so now the next thing you wanna do, and I forgot to explain this in the beginning of the craft, is I don't know if you can see, especially now that we have glued items on here, but have a parent 
take a knife or some scissors and you wanna cut where the beak is, just a little bit of a hole, because we're gonna tuck some pieces of bread down in there. So yeah, that might work. Let's see if we can break it off just a little bit. And I'm gonna see if I can put this one through here. So it has it, can you tell? Tell, it's in its beak. Okay, I'm gonna put some glue down here and do you wanna put some chips or some bread there? You know, God is so wonderful because he has promised that he will provide for us. We never have to worry because God will always provide for our needs. All right. So I'm going to hold this up and it's going to be hard to show you because it hasn't dried yet. So I'm just going to keep my fingers there, but it would be dried and it would hold the bread in. So until next time, I want you to remember to start everything you do with Jesus. Bye-bye. Shout out to Jalisa, Joelle, Eliana, Sangnamichu, Wangari, Omega, Garuma, Gidel, Gideon, Liliana, Eliora, Allison, Emmelyn, Mia, Analia, Benji, Amy, Elijah, Kevin, Isaiah, Olivia, Elnathan, Hannah, Abby, Giovanni, Giada, Gage, Julia, Arthur, Noel, Truman, Benny, Ellie, Denny, Dom, Andrea, Mia, Gabriel, Thomas, Michael, Mayjay, and Kaishin. Great job answering your questions. friends, have you ever emailed us answers for the Bible questions? If not, this could be the week you try it. Our email is answers at startingwithjesus.com. We love it when you participate in our lesson. So email me the, these answers. Well, I'm not going to tell you the answers. The answers to these questions at our email address, answers at startingwithjesus.com. Here they come. God cares for Elijah. Question number one. Who did the people of Israel worship? In this lesson, who did the people of Israel worship? Number two, what was Israel's consequence from, for turning from the true God? What was Israel's consequence for turning from the true God? And number three, how did God care for Elijah? Number three, how did God care for Elijah? Now there's lots of ways, so you can just tell me a couple. All right, I look forward to hearing from you. Our Mimi verse is in Matthew 6, verse 8. Your Father knows the things you need before you ask Him. Matthew 6, verse 8. Your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask. Your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask Him. Matthew 6, verse 8. Verse your father knows the things that you have need of before you ask him. Matthew 6, 8. Your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. Matthew 6, verse 8. For your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. Matthew 6, verse 8. Your father knows what things you have need of before you ask him. Matthew 6, verse 8. For your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. Matthew chapter 6, verse 8. Hi, this week's memory verse is Matthew 6, verse 8.
before you ask him. Your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. Matthew 6, verse 8. Your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. Matthew 6, 8. It was uh, before you ask him. Your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. Matthew 6. Your father knows, your father knows the things you have need of, the things you have need of, before you ask him. Matthew 6 verse 8, for your father knows what things he had need of before ye ask him. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. Matthew 6 verse 8. Your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. Matthew 6 verse 8. Your father knows what you have need of before you even ask him. Father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. Before you ask him. Your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. Before you ask him. Matthew 6, verse 8. Bye. Have a happy Sabbath and a happy new week. Bye. Happy Sabbath. Bye. Happy Sabbath. Happy, happy Sabbath. Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Bye. Bye. Happy Sabbath. Bye. Happy Sabbath. Bye. Happy Sabbath. Bye. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, friends! Bye, happy Sabbath! 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 Goodbye, happy Sabbath! Goodbye, happy Sabbath! Goodbye, happy Sabbath! Happy Sabbath! for the win. But happy Sabbath, friends. Bye, happy Sabbath. Bye, happy Sabbath. In this week's lesson, we heard about a lot of miracles. The dew and the rain stopped. Elijah was fed by ravens. The water and the oil didn't fail. A young boy was brought back to life. Miracles are things that can't be explained by science or by natural laws. They're the impossible happening. Now we're going to study some scriptures about miracles today. So go get your Bibles and we're going to do a scripture scavenger hunt. Our first verse is Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 21. It says, he is your praise and he is your blank. Who has done for you these great and awesome things which your eyes have seen? He is your what? God. Your God. 
Our next verse is Jeremiah 32, 27. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too blank for me? Jeremiah 32, 27. Is there anything too blank for God? Is there anything too blank for God? Hard. No, there's nothing too hard for God. John chapter 2, verse 11. This beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee, and blank his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Blank his glory. Jesus blanked his glory. He did what to his glory? Showed. He showed it, manifested it, revealed his glory. Luke chapter 18 verse 27 says, the things which are blank with men are possible with God. The things that are blank with men are possible with God. What word are we looking for? Impossible. That's right. Things that are impossible for us are possible for God. Matthew 17, 20 is our last verse. If you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be blank for you. Nothing will be what for you? Impossible. That's right. With faith, nothing will be impossible for you. We serve a God of miracles who wants to do miracles for you and through you. Praise the Lord, our God of miracles. Thank you so much for watching. I'm so glad you are here. Wow, wasn't that an exciting story? And I can't wait for next week for the climax of the story. Oh, it's going to be exciting with Elijah and Ahab and what is going to happen. This story was exciting too. How Elijah just ran into King Ahab's court and told him what God had him to say. Oh, man, that took courage, didn't it? You know, last week I challenged you that when you hear something in the story, find one thing that you can act on. And you know what? I found that thing. I can be a little bit scared to do things that might be out of my comfort zone. And as I was listening to that story, I realized that, you know what? When God tells us to do something, we need to act with courage. And so, as I'm going through my life, I want to be like Elijah. And I want to act with courage. And to do what he asked me to do, not, oh, oh, but to walk in and do it and do exactly what he says. Don't you? Well, I want to challenge you to listen to the stories once again and to find something that you can act on in our stories. And you can find more stories like this and more things like this, coloring pages, worksheets, and so much more if you go to our website at startingwithjesus.com. We want to encourage you to go there because we have lots of things that will help you to have courage for Jesus and to start with Jesus every day. Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, thank you so much for your love. Thank you so much for your goodness. Help us to have courage like Elijah, that when everybody around us might be doing something we know is wrong, that we will stand for you, that when you call us to go, to act, to do something, we will go with courage and that we will do what you ask us to do. We love you, Jesus, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks so much for watching. Have a blessed week and keep in touch.